The movie begins with our protagonist Zoe Hull, a 17-year-old high school senior, and her father, an ex-army veteran Todd Hull, going hunting together. Todd hopes to reconnect with Zoe by bringing her hunting since she recently lost her mother to cancer. While she aims for the deer, he instructs her to take the shot in between breaths. However, Zoe's shot failed to kill the deer, so he passed some important wisdom to her. She needs to take care of the unfinished business and not let nature run its course because it is extremely painful for animals. While he explaining the process, she ends the deer's suffering by hitting its head with a rock. Todd is unhappy with how she handled it, but he helps her in bringing the deer home. While Zoe is having breakfast, she sees her mother in the kitchen, who tells her to slow down and inquire about senior prom. She's still having a hard time dealing with her mum's death, so she often imagines and talks to her. But when Todd walks in, Zoe hides their conversation from him. When he suggests to Zoe maybe they should see a therapist again because she is always angry and isolated away from everything she cares about. Zoe gets mad and tries to leave, but Todd encourages her to act like a 17-year-old by telling her to use her phone and quit wearing his army jacket every day because life will be easier if she isn't at war with herself. However, they are interrupted before she can react by her best friend, Louis Washington, who has arrived in his car to pick her up. On their way to school, he tries to cheer her up by explaining that he came in intentionally to rescue her from her father's war speech and that he took a calculated risk in doing so. Meanwhile, three of their classmates approached from behind and continued to honk at them. When one of the jocks, Roy, starts insulting them, Zoe counters by saying that in a few days, no one will care about him and he will be forgotten, which makes them mad and forces Lewis' car off the road. While he is trying to start the car, Zoe notices their classmate Chris Jellick planting a strange device in the middle of an open field, but Lewis dismisses it as dumb stuff because it is senior prank day. Zoe seems apathetic and tells him this is even dumber than the flood of prom proposals, leaving him speechless. At school, Lewis asks Zoe to go with him to the locker, but she is already late for her class and will catch up with him at lunch. She observes Lewis acting weird, so she tells him to lighten up on the yearbook editing because high school events do not matter in the real world. She sees her friend Cora in math class and the two of them are annoyed by the prom proposal that occurred in their class. After chemistry class, Mrs. Crawford encourages Zoe to get more involved in the class and not fade into the background because she is a smart kid who used to love her class. Zoe then goes to her locker and discovers Louis' invitation to prom, however, she is not happy about it and slams the door shut. The device planted before by Chris blows up, causing fire on the field. Just before lunch break begins, Kip leaves a bag at the front office and walks away. When Louis talks about the prom invitation during lunch, Zoe dislikes the idea and turns him down, which makes him believe she is shutting him too. While he tries to calm her, he accidentally spills a drink on her so she has to go to the bathroom to clean herself. Meanwhile, one of the wooden cabins blows up close to the road across town. As Zoe is entering the bathroom, she finds Hannah Jellick moving the ceiling panel and rushes out of the stall. When Zoe asks if she lost anything, Hannah intentionally bumps into her and leaves. Zoe calls her bitch and checks the panel she had just moved, but finds nothing except for the gun mark left in the dust. While Zoe is cleaning up, her mother appears and talks about Louis. Zoe admits she likes him, but she is afraid of losing him as well. While Louis wait for Zoe to return, a van suddenly crashes into the cafeteria. Chris comes out of the van and shoots two students, and he is soon followed by his sister Hannah with the pistol, and Kip, shot one of the students who tries to run away. Their leader, Tristan Boy, appears at last and stabs the coach who is trying to get him. He then kisses Hannah and asks her to carry out their plans. Meanwhile, Zoe realizes what is going on when one of the wounded girls enters the bathroom and dies in Zoe's hands. Tristan tells the students that he is now in charge and asks them to comply so that they may survive. He then come across Roy, who used to call him faggot on a daily basis, so Chris shot him for being disrespectful. Zoe goes back to the bathroom after seeing Roy's death and trying to escape through the ceiling. However, she accidentally flushes the toilet, leading Kip to enter the girl's bathroom. But she manages to climb and close the ceiling panel before he checks the last stall. When he returns to the cafeteria, he sees the girl he shot earlier and froze for a moment. While Zoe escapes by crawling through the ceiling, Tristan asks everyone to use their phones to inform their parents about the situation. Louis left a voice message to his mother, telling her how much he loves her and thanking her for giving him this life. Zoe reaches the end of the ceiling and tries to open a vent, but she falls into the school kitchen. When Chris arrives to look into the noises, Zoe rushes to the storage room where the lunch lady, Brenda, is also hiding. Brenda reaches out her hand to take Zoe's hand while both staying as calm as possible. When Chris gets closer and closer, Brenda signals Zoe to stay put and confronts Chris, but he shot and kills her. The town's police and fire department are busy with all the fires around the town, so they are slower than usual. After everyone is done talking to their parents, Tristan borrows a phone and calls the school's front office to inform them about the shooting. 
Tristan explains to students that in the past, if they got information about a shooting, they would put the school on lockdown right away. But now, the school board has decided that they must first confirm the information before announcing it. So Tristan orders all the students to live stream with their phones. Meanwhile, Zoe exits the cafeteria through the back door and runs towards the exit. However, she suddenly stops, recalls the hunting trip she took with her father earlier, and decides to fight. When she notices other students entering, she runs towards them and warns them not to go inside, and rushes to inform the other classes with her friend Cora. Tristan threatens social media companies not to interrupt the live stream, or else he will have to shoot students right away if they do. While he is talking about society's preference for chaos, the security guard and school principal arrives. The principal apologizes for threatening him with expulsion for being sent to his office rather than taking the time to understand him better. But Tristan seems unconcerned, claiming that he wanted to come to his office to get his keys and make a copy of them. He then signals Chris to shoot him and allows the guard to escape so he can confirm the school shooting. Zoe and Cora are warning the other classroom from outside, but the teacher dismisses them as a senior day prank and ignores them. Tristan asks everyone to turn off their recordings except for the one with the most viewer, which happens to be Lewis, because he streams on the school's social page. So he asks Lewis to be his main cameraman, and the others are ordered to barricade the hole caused by the van. Zoe smashes a window in another classroom and convinces the teacher of the cafeteria shooting. While students escape through the window, one of them finds that the shooting is being broadcast live on the school's social media page. Lewis records Tristan and discovers that the van they came in is full of explosives. When Cora mentions escaping via window is taking too long, Zoe activates the emergency alarm to alert the entire school. As a result, teachers are telling their students to form a line and leave the classrooms. However, Tristan was expecting this, and Hannah was already in place to disable the alarm. So the teachers believe it was only a prank and take their students back to the classroom. Due to the explosives, Sheriff Tadi is having difficulty getting to the school and instructs his deputy to only enter if there is an active shooting and not if there is a hostage situation. Zoe gets angry as the alarm plan fails, so she decides to go to the front office to notify them. When she was on her way, Hannah killed the maintenance guy and turned off the power, leading Zoe to fall due to the darkness and someone spilled oil as a prank. After receiving confirmation from the security guard, the receptionist finally announces the lockdown. As Zoe is getting closer to the front office, the homemade bomb kip left there earlier explodes. Sheriff Tardy arrives at the school and sets up the perimeter before Cora passes him the phone and informs him of the situation. Tristan checks the news and gets frustrated because the channels are sending reporters instead of showing his stream on TV. So he tells the phone camera that the public wants to see him, not their stupid reporter. Zoe awakens from the explosion and rushes to check on the security guard, but he is dead. While she searches his pockets, her mom appears and tells Zoe that the guard is free of all attachments, unlike her because she still has one person who is not quite ready to let her go. When Zoe hears Hannah's voice, she lays down next to the security guard and pretends to be dead. Hannah kicks the guard for stealing her weed and records stomping on Zoe's hands, but she manages to hide her pain until Hannah is told to sweep the rooms. Kip informs Tristan that channels are warning viewer about graphic content, implying that the live stream may be aired. Tristan gets what he wanted, so he heads to other classrooms to increase the hostages and invites Lewis to join him. Zoe tells one of the teachers to break the windows and escape because the lockdown was planned and the shooters wanted to keep everyone in their place. While she is trying to convince the teacher, Hannah overhears her and returns to shoot her in the leg from a distance. As she reloads, Zoe opens her locker and uses it as a shield before running into the balloon-filled room. With Lewis still recording, Tristan enters the Spanish classroom to take those students with him to the cafeteria. The Spanish teacher, Miss Nunes, tries to reason with him, but Tristan urges her to take off her clothes in return for the students' lives. Hannah walks into the room and fires random shots at the balloons, but Zoe jumps on her from the cabinet and the two girls fight over the pistol. As Hannah is about to kill her, Zoe overpowers her and shoots her in the head. Tristan is about to touch her inappropriately, but Lewis interrupts him, stating that viewer are curious and have some questions for him. Tristan's focus was diverted away from Miss Nunes thanks to Lewis' tactics. Zoe is annoyed that the pistol is empty since she killed Hannah with the last bullet. She searches Hannah's body for her phone, so she can hear what the shooters are saying and her belt to stop the bleeding from the gunshot. While Tristan was addressing questions from the stream, the sheriff sent one of his officers to Tristan's house to speak with his parents, only to discover that the mother was dead, her neck cut open. Todd hears the news about the shooting on the radio, and he decides to rush to the school with weapons loaded in his truck. Chris is a schizophrenic who struggles to remain focused because he hears voices in his head. When he hears the news the police are preparing an attack, he starts firing at them and almost gets one of the deputies, but luckily the West saves her. Upon hearing the gunshots, Tristan cut short his questions and ordered everyone from the Spanish classroom to the cafeteria. 
While they are walking back, Zoe notices them in the corridor and decides to follow Kip as he goes to gather more students for hostage. Chris apologizes to Tristan and informs him that voices are trying to take over. Tristan stops Chris from kissing him and says there is a lot more work to be done. Chris is upset and tells Tristan that he has moved on to his sister and no longer loves him. But Tristan says he loves both of them equally and asks him to calm down. Kip fires at the chemistry lab door and is about to enter. When Zoe is about to attack him, Hannah phone turns on, leading Kip to turn back and fire at Zoe, but misses. He follows her and stops when he finds Hannah body. Zoe appears in front of him to draw his attention and get him to chase her again. She leads him over a slippery floor, causing him to fall and drop his glasses. She sprays a fire extinguisher on his face and strikes him with it. She handcuffs Kip to the chair and sees her mother, who looks different with long hair. Kip wakes up and tells Zoe that Tristan called this a reckoning. He tries to justify cause of a bullying incident that happened in middle school, but Zoe thinks he is disgusting and pathetic for using that as an excuse. She tries to awaken his remorse by telling him how that innocent girl died in her arms. Zoe grabs his shotgun on her way back and comes across a group of students with their teacher, Mrs. Crawford. She calls Cora, who passes her phone to the sheriff. Zoe informs him that the entire class could exit now, but the shooters are watching their every move on the news. So sheriff requests the reporter not to show the school and tells him to broadcast the conversation as he is about to call Tristan. He distracts him with phone call while Zoe and Mrs. Crawford safely guide as many students as possible to the exit. However, when Chris notices the rescue coming on the news, Tristan realizes the phone call was just a distraction to rescue the students. Todd feels proud when one of the rescued students informs him that her daughter saved us and returned to help other students. Zoe refuses to answer the phone when Tristan calls Hannah and Kip. However, when he threatens to kill the students, she answers him and informs him that Hannah is dead and Kip is captured. When she mentions her name, Lewis is glad and relieved that Zoe is still alive. Tristan shoots one of the students and warns her that someone will die every five minutes until she arrives at the cafeteria. Todd is watching it live and realizes she needs help, so he takes his sniper rifle and sneaks into the school grounds. After telling him she will be there, Zoe goes back to Kip, who is feeling guilty for what he has done and wishes to die. Zoe convinces him to redeem himself and do something good before it ends. So she unlocks his cuff and hands him the shotgun. While Todd finds the spot and gets his weapon ready, Zoe makes it to the cafeteria. Tristan can't believe it's the green jacket girl and mocks her when was the last time she removed it. While they are both arguing about the meaning of all this, Chris interrupts and wants to shoot her right away as she killed his sister, but Tristan won't allow it and asks him to wait for the right time. They are suddenly interrupted by Kip, who threatens to shoot them if they don't stop, but Chris has had enough and shoots him. Zoe and Lewis manage to escape when Chris attends to Tristan, who was shot in the shoulder by Kip. He orders Chris to kill them and recover the streaming phone. Lewis gets hurt while escaping and can't go further, so she takes him to the classroom and puts him down on a couch. Zoe checks Lewis' wound, at which point she confesses her feelings for him and kisses him. While Todd is repositioning to help her daughter, Lewis informs her that the van in the cafeteria has been rigged with explosives. When Zoe hears Chris' footsteps, she leaves Lewis in the classroom and allows Chris to chase her again. Zoe enters the science lab and turns on the hydrogen taps, trying to burn him by igniting a fire when Chris gets closer, which also helps Todd to locate Zoe. She then throws acid on his face, which makes him drop the gun and she tries to escape the lab. But Chris still manages to catch her and toss her to the ground. When he is about to kill her, Todd takes a shot from outside and kills him instead. When Zoe looks outside to see who saved her, she watches her father being detained by a SWAT team. So Zoe sends Tristan a photo of Chris' body and returns to check on Lewis. She gives him her jacket and taunts Tristan on her way to the cafeteria. She finds Lewis' phone on the floor, hijacks the stream, and tells Tristan that the world will remember her, not him, which frustrates him. Tristan grabs one of the explosives from the van and orders a student to carry it with him. As they walk down the hallway, Zoe sees them from behind and takes the opportunity to enter the cafeteria, where she orders all the hostages to run. Zoe immediately checks the van and notices only 45 seconds till the explosion, so she jams the gas pedal with Chris' gun and puts the gear in reverse, causing the van to move outside and explode in the parking lot. Zoe then tries to pursue Tristan, but is stopped by SWAT, who orders her to go down on her knees. They are about to arrest Zoe when someone blows up behind them, and the body is completely burned. The officer zip ties her hands and asks her to stay down. Zoe sees her mom for one last time and tells her she looks beautiful. She bursts into tears when her mom says goodbye and walks away. Outside the school, Sheriff Tari expresses his gratitude and praises Zoe's actions. When she inquires about Tristan, he tells her he is dead and has been burned to a crisp. Zoe then requests a conversation with her father, to which he agrees. Zoe approaches her father, admitting that she was at war and thanking him for saving her. 
Todd responds that they're even because she gave him a reason to live 18 years ago, which made her so happy. While the first responder says Louis should be fine, Zoe notices Tristan fleeing the scene in disguise. So she asks her father what happened to his rifle, and he informs her it should be right where he left it. Zoe recovers Todd's sniper and follows Tristan into the woods, where he grabs a box under a bridge with money and a passport. Zoe aims the sniper at him and fires, but it was not the kill shot. She recalled her father's words, yet she gladly let him bleed to death. Unlike an animal, he deserves to suffer. If you enjoyed the movie, make sure to like and subscribe for more amazing videos.